Hi, welcome everyone. Um, thanks for being prompt um, and on time. And this is a good time to uh, turn on your videos. They don't turn automatically. Hello, Rami. Hi, Alvin. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Jennifer. Hi. 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 Jiko, can you hear and see us? I've just uh, heard you, yes. Okay, good. Because we can't see you yet, but um, we can hear you. Uh, I find that if I turn on the video, the screen freezes. So Got I it. might remain in the Got dark. It. I am. It's <laughs> 5 a.m. Okay. That's totally fine. Um, so like I said, thank you so much for um, joining and being on time. Um, we had about uh, 13 people who registered to the call. So maybe let's uh, wait a couple of more minutes and let them join. And then we'll start. Uh, Rami, I only yeah. have yeah. 1.30 and I have to go give a so, so anyway, if I great. would just quietly sign out, but just so I didn't want to miss this. So, okay. okay, great. Thanks for letting me know. Hi, Carla. Uh, welcome. Thanks for joining. Uh, we're just taking a, a moment, sitting in silence, waiting for a few more people to join. And we'll start in a minute. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Um, thanks for joining. Um, my name is Rami Afal. I'm the executive director of uh, Zen Peacemakers International. And I'm really glad to um, have you all um, present. And this is our first cluster meeting. So this is uh, very exciting to me because this is uh, part of a plan that we've been planning for many months and it took time um, to have the amount of membership that we have to um, 
to fill the meetings. And so um, this is the first one. Next month is going to be another one. Um, I also realize that there's a, a wide diversity in terms of uh, people's exposure and experience with Zen Peacemakers. I know some people on this call have had decades of, of uh, connection and work with Zen Peacemakers. Some of you are maybe newer. So I'll just give a little bit of um, intro just in terms of what this is, what's the intention of the meeting to, and a little bit of what we'll do for the next hour. Um, so just briefly, Zen Peacemakers International is the um, uh, present day continuation of uh, 30 years of uh, vision that Bernie Glassman, our founder, had of uh, taking spiritual practice, contemplative practices, um, not limited to meditation, um, into the world. The world is our cushion, and this is where we take our practice in. And we infuse that with that sense of um, unity, openness, diversity, and particularly with those three principles that Bernie coined uh, coming from his uh, teachings and trainings, which are the three tenets, uh, coming with and giving rise to not knowing, um, giving up our preconceived ideas and biases, and really seeing each moment in you. That can be a challenging practice, and that's why it's a practice. Um, we bear witness to both the joys and the sufferings of the world. We don't only rush to the suffering, we, only, we don't only stay and bear witness to the joys. We realize that there's a um, richness to both, and both internally and in others. And that's also where the realm of connection and intimacy happens, because we start listening in a different way. And the third principle is the taking action that comes out of that. Sometimes it's called loving action. Sometimes it's called faithful action. Sometimes it's called fierce action. Um, but it's action that comes from those not knowing and bearing witness. And in terms of Zen Peacemakers International right now, our mission is really to put the internationality of our membership and our network in here. Um, and even just this call, once we start going around, you'll see there's a lot of different countries represented here. Um, and the clusters, uh, we're really coming up together uh, when we realize that there are members who are in different places around the planet who are called to come together uh, by a calling, a certain way of calling. Um, it's, the calling is even prior to what the calling affects. So this particular cluster is the Peace Builders cluster. Anybody who is resonating somehow with that work of peace building, it's open to peace building in anything around politics, gender, race, climate, anywhere that peace building is needed. So all of these different fields of interest are welcome here, but the clusters are really were put together as forms of um, what our hearts is called for, whether it's humanitarian, through um, medical practices, service practices, um, activism, art. So these are the different clusters. And the Peace Builders has been the biggest one. We have about 700 people who identified as Peace Builders. Um, so this is why we chose this one to be the first one. So that's a quick... Um, intro in terms of what the clusters are and what, what the um, intention of the clusters, particularly just so you know, this meeting is um, really about connection. It's really about musing about what it means to be a peace builder, what, how do we see that in, this, in the context of the three tenets. Um, this is not intended to brainstorm in terms of um, coming up with projects, strategy, think tanking. We'll actually have meetings for that too. If people have ideas that they want to bounce with other people, we'll have that too. This is really for connection um, around this subject. And the form that we'll be using to just share is um, a very um, common form that we use in different Zen Peacemaker um, practices and events. It's called council. And it will be a variation of council, um, which is just a form of a sharing circle. Um, there's some very simple guidelines, 
And um, again, this is a kind of a variation on that, but um, I'm just inviting everyone to listen from the heart, speak from the heart, speak spontaneously, um, be aware that we have uh, a big group here and we have about an hour. Um, so to be lean and you know come to the essence of what you want to share. And um, and if you notice, I gave um, numbers at the, before each name, so that will give us a little um, indication of how this circle will flow. So that way, we can self-facilitate ourselves. So if you're number three and number two just spoke, you you can know that you'll be the next one to speak. You can also pass if you'd like totally fine. You can also remain silent if you wish. Um, that's also completely fine. Um, the real um, heart that comes from council is if we really remember that the meditation and the silence that we just had before starting is really the, the ground where all of this comes from. So we can always come back to that silence and just hold it in our bodies and, and see how that informs what we share. So I said much. I would uh, love to go back into that silence and maybe let's just do a quick round um, by the numbers. Um, please introduce yourself, say your name, where you're from, and maybe a little bit, uh, maybe let's just start with that. And then the second round we can start into really the the, the question of like, what is peace building? How are we seeing that in the three tenets? And um, that'll be the second round. So let's just start. So I already saw the luck. So I will pass on the mic to Jennifer. Um, and we'll just do a, a quick introduction where we're from and maybe a few words of just how we're feeling right now. Mm -hmm. No, I'm feeling good because I'm smiling at you. <laughs> um, so my name is Jennifer. I'm a midwife. Uh, and um, I work, um, my work is all about being global. I work uh, with nurses and midwives um, for the last 15 years in sub-Saharan African countries around HIV and um, capacity building in Eastern Mediterranean region. I get to teach I'm at Columbia University School of Nursing, and um, I feel like um, I'm always learning from nurses and midwives wherever I am about peacemaking because they live day to day under unimaginable circumstances, giving care and. Um, Oftentimes they create jeopardy, and yet they're resilient. So I feel like I'm a receiver of a lot of peace in my journeys. That's all. Thank you. And where are you from, Jennifer? Uh, New York, the moment. <laughs> For a while, New York. New York. The United States. Great. Thank you. Uh, Chico, I don't know if you can see your number three, so please um, yes, feel free to join me. Um, I'm Chico, and I live in <clears throat> Wellington, New Zealand, which is described, I think, by Lonely Planet as the coolest little capital in the world. <laughs> uh, it's five o'clock in the morning, so I'm sleepy. Um, what else do you want to know? <laughs> mm. uh, maybe just a little bit of... Um, uh, what you're involved in, what your work is. Um, Jiko has been involved with MPC Memphis for many, many, many years. Studied uh, and worked with Bernie, so just wanted to acknowledge that. So um, I have a small um, meditation center. I work with impoverished uh, children and um, connecting them to the natural world. Um, I work with old age people. Uh, with chaplaincy and uh, I do political work particularly to do with child poverty um, with United Nations Association uh, I run a house of one people where I have that's how I survive financially by having boarders from students around the world in my house um, 
that'll do for now. A lot of other stuff, but uh, oh, yeah. Very pleased to meet up um, and and to do to be with. Uh, it's fairly isolated um, this part of the world. Uh, don't find much um, response, or rather positive, much positive response to Buddhism and the many of the circles in which I move. And it's always good to find a mm. practitioners and who have uh, some understanding and openness to the kinds of things that I have have nourished me most of my life. Thank you for doing this, uh, Rami. And uh, of course, deep uh, thanks to Bernie for this whole thing that he's opened for so many of us. Thanks, Chico. Um, I'll then go ahead and really feel free to just, once uh, the previous person ended, just jump in. I don't need to add my voice as much as, um, as I do. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Rami. Um, thank you, Chico. Um, my name is Alvin, and I'm uh, from Sweden. Uh, I'm living outside Stockholm right now in a community. And uh, I've been... Uh, working as the mindfulness instructor in Sweden. I founded a company, doing some courses and uh, into business and academics. And then 2016, I began a peace pilgrimage, walking through Europe, uh, learning by peace through meetings. Uh, and that went on for about two years. Uh, I got down to Serbia and learned a lot on the way. Uh, it put me in contact with many, many beautiful networks and some peacemakers was one of them thanks to a friend and some sandals involved and right now i am building up my life here in sweden again uh, seeing how i can work with people and inner peace in stockholm i'm also a writer and i have this sacred vase from nepal in my lap right now which i will somehow get to south korea this spring hopefully in a pilgrimage with, with many more people, maybe some people even from some peacemakers, hopefully. Mm -hmm. So that's that's my intention for being here today and for being involved in the CPA right now to, to connect and find out who wants to join this this peace pilgrimage. And yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, hi everyone. Um, my name is Brenda and um, I'm new to Zen Peacemakers, so I'm so excited to hear that I haven't missed out on other cluster meetings. Um, so uh, I live right outside of Boston, Massachusetts in the USA and um, I teach psychology full time at Boston University and most of the peacemaking or peace building that I do um, is with students and mostly within the classroom. Uh, teaching social psychology and um, recently I've kind of switched over to join the chaplain chaplaincy team just volunteering teaching meditation and so it's brand new for me um, I'm really excited about it because I felt I have been feeling really constrained in the classroom um, my connection to this group is that uh, I'm going to begin the chaplaincy training program at Upaya beginning in next year in March. And so um, I just feel like I'm at a place in my life where I've been trying to fit my practice into my life. And now I'm finding I'm really trying to fit my life into my practice. And so um, being part of this group is really kind of taking things to the next level for me. And so I'm just really excited to, to meet you all and to be here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'm next. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. all right. Um, uh, my name is Carla Pasalacqua. My Dharma name is Jigen, so that's a, a new Dharma name, actually. And um, I'm 
in beautiful Ann Arbor, Michigan, although the building behind me is not reflective of that beauty, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, I work at the University of Michigan. I'm a scientist. I'm a microbiologist. Um, I study uh, very nasty things that give gastrointestinal disease. So um, uh, right this very moment, I'm feeling a little stressed out because I have some deadlines to meet and I'm starting teaching tomorrow. Um, but I uh, belong to um, two sanghas, one here in Ann Arbor and one in Indiana. And um, with the local one here in Ann Arbor, I've worked um, for several years uh, doing meditation services at uh, the women's prison here in town. Um, although I haven't been doing that for the past few months, I've been traveling a lot. Um, and also we have a group called uh, Earth and Mind, Earth and Mind, that's our new name, uh, for our environmental group at our Ann Arbor Sangha. And we've been doing um, a variety of um, eco retreats and special um, ecologically themed services at the temple. Um, and so over the past few years, those have been my main um, kind of activities and aside from work, uh, which is pretty all consuming. Um, and I, I'm pretty new to Zen Peacemakers. Um, I really would like to attend a Bearing Witness retreat and it's just been hard um, to fit that in with my work schedule. So I, I'm really hoping to do that in the next um, year or so. So, and thank you for organizing this meeting and it's, it's nice to meet everyone. Hi, all of you, I'm Kathleen uh, and I'm in Germany, in Bonn. It's uh, evening time, sun setting, and it was a very warm, beautiful late summer day here. Uh, and I'm uh, packing um, my suitcase for um, for a weekend workshop I'm going to give in south of Germany. So uh, my mind is, as Rami asked, how are you at the moment? It's a bit, I'm, I'm well prepared and I think everything's already kind of packed, but uh, I'm still in, my, in the back of my head. I'm just checking, having the checklist and so that everything's uh, with me for this workshop. And it's a workshop that tells a bit about my work. So I, I work as a writer on the one hand. I, I do writing and publishing quite a lot. And I also do facilitating or do workshops, especially in biographic writing. And, um, and uh, the, the, the people I do that with mostly are children and grandchildren of the Second World War here in Germany. So people who were kids during the war or are the offspring of that generation. So my peace focus there is kind of peace between the generations, but also what has this family background and history to do with also how society, what society looks like at the moment here in Germany. So that's one of my focuses. And the other is also environmental peace. So how, can we, how do we deal with our natural resources and how can I contribute to saving um, a forest, for example, at the moment that we are fighting to save, which is meant to be uh, cut down for brown coal mining, which is kind of a pretty old, um, out of time technology. So that's two examples. Uh, great to be here. I'm, I'm in touch with the Zen Peacemakers um, formally, meaning I've, I've read a lot of, of Bernie's books and have been in, uh, kind of looking after what happens there. But in 2011, I went to Auschwitz-Birkenau, joined the retreat, and since then I'm pretty often here and more and more on the screen also <laughs> in meetings like this. And I also I organize and um, facilitate the online councils for the for the members of this FBI at the moment in cooperation with Rami. Thanks for the moment. That's me. And I pass on to Dove. Dove or Dovey? Dove. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Um, it's Dove, like the um, dove. like the bird. The bird, yeah. Um, but sometimes it is Dove, so it could be either. But thanks. Uh, I'm in Philadelphia, which is in Pennsylvania in the United States. And um, I've, I've been um, involved. 
I'm, I'm not, I guess I'm not much of an involved like group person. So, but I've been on a number of um, Zen Peacemaker retreats. I'm very drawn to the street retreats. And um, so I've, I've done that. And, and, when I, and when someone spoke about, um, I guess in Africa, working with um, under, underprivileged um, kids, I'm, I, I'm on the other spectrum. I, I, work with, I work with privileged, I work with privileged kids and, um, and privileged adults. And, and through teaching yoga and through um, teaching in a, I guess in, a, in two right now, two Jewish um, supplemental schools. So I'm teaching privileged kids and and trying to bring mindfulness and into their lives and and a little bit of what it what the responsibility of privilege is and how to um, how to be responsible privileged people um, in a way that sometimes escapes escapes them and it escapes me at moments. Um, I don't. I, I. I keep. I keep coming back to a few of these meetings, um, which I. Which. Which has been great for me because um, it pushes me to think um, a little bit more about what I want to do, and I more or less. Uh, I, like I said, I don't work with groups. I sort of take on my own. My own individual projects and, um, and have gotten um, a lot of rewards from them. Um, I was on. I was at the Kilgali, the Rwanda retreat, um, about four or five years ago, and um, there was a guy there from Rwanda who was um, a photographer taking pictures with an iPhone and um, a borrowed camera. And when I came back to the states, I managed to um, get him a uh, get him a camera, and 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 I've watched him in the last two or three years um, become literally an international photographer. Um, and I throw bags of food in my bike when I go for a bike ride and just stop where there are homeless people and just leave bags of food with them. So I'm not, I'm, I, I don't, so when I hear about y'all doing such wonderful organized things, there's a little bit of jealousy. I don't, I, I haven't, I, I don't know how to, I don't know how to do that. Um, like I would love to, I would love to go to New Zealand, you know, and, and hang out and, and, and I don't know, I don't quite know how to say, other than just saying that, I don't know how to say that and say, yeah, I want to come there. I want to come and see what you're doing. So yeah, that, that, that's, that's me. I'm in Philadelphia. Thank you. Mm. Thanks everyone. Um, let's just take a moment to like, Take all of this in, mm. particularly in a group like this. It's what I enjoy doing, and I, I find a lot of connection by really imagining the planet and trying to put Sweden, Boston, Ann Arbor, Philadelphia, Germany, New Zealand, and visualizing that. It's very powerful. Mm. You know, somebody asked uh, before this call, emailed me and asked, what is Peace Builders? You need to put some kind of a definition so I would know whether I identify as one. And I thought, that's a wonderful question. Like, what is that? And let's bring that to the conversation. Because the way this is... Um, this whole thing is about how we inspire ourselves to respond in the world, right? So what is it that I'm resonating with when I identify as a peace builder? And each one of you, and why is it that I come back to this work? Whatever form it takes. Mm. 
So maybe we can do another round um, and maybe like just a couple of minutes each, uh, just to make sure that we can at least have one full round with everyone. And just reflect on that. Um, I really appreciate this opportunity. I'll just jump in and start that um, it's so important for me to actually sit in with people and reflect on that. I forget. I get so caught up in my budgets and organizings. And the first thing that came up to me as I asked that right now is when I was probably six or seven years old and I was growing up in Israel in a privileged, pretty privileged middle class urban city and hearing, you know, the first intifada was just wrapping up a lot of suicide bombings and stabbing, Israel-Palestinian conflict was going on. Knowing that my father fought in wars with Egypt and Lebanon, and I was watching cartoons on the Lebanese TV and the Egyptian TV, and I loved them. And I remember thinking as a kid, like, why, why is that? Why are the grown-ups fighting? It's a very, in a way, naive, question, but I remember as a child thinking that. So first, as I'm saying that, I'm actually breathing into that little kid who was like, thanks for remembering me. <laughs> and and what is it that, what is this capacity that I have to share, for example, right now and feeling fully safe and peaceful with others, and how is it not present in other times? What is this capacity? And also, what is peacefulness? Does that mean that I'm always docile and kind of mellow and flowing? Or can I have an argument and maintain something else that may be peace? So this is just the thoughts that come up and the feeling that I'm feeling is just um, a spaciousness right now as I speak of it, as I'm invoking that and appreciating aligning myself back with whatever energy that is. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And let's go by the numbers. Um, Jennifer had to leave early, so Jiko, you're next. Um, can you tell me what you what what I, what I'm talking about? I got wrapped mm -hmm. up on what you were saying. <laughs> We were just musing on what peace builders mean, peace building means for us. Right. What is the calling behind that? Yes, and and for me, I get um, um, I hear so often that peace is when everybody else understands and believes what I believe and is doing what I think they should do and being happy about it. <laughs> And I just, oh no, <laughs> that disturbs my peace when I hear that. Um, and I hear that a lot. Um, so for me, peace is um, where there is, uh, our differences create edges. We do have conflict, but we are um, able to recognize that this is an opportunity and to turn towards this and have confidence that I, that I can find the skills to open to our differences and so therefore a life without disturbances, a life without anger, a life without outrage or um, is, is uh, not peace building, um, it's denial. And, um, but having the skills and confidence to move towards the differences and to connect um, is, is, a, is a lifelong training and that's what our uh, meditation and um, 
and the work offered us by those that have gone before in this area is so va very valuable. Uh, yeah, it's walking towards whatever is at the edges of what makes me comfortable. And that's that makes for a very, the richness in, in uh, my life and uh, uh, what I endeavor to do. Thank you. And I'm very grateful for the opportunity to that um, the Zen Peacemakers has offered in street retreats and uh, going to Auschwitz, Bosnia a couple of years ago to move the space of the bubble that will, uh, I, I develop around myself. I think if that's human, we develop bubbles around ourselves that make us feel safe, but to, to expand beyond that, to have those opportunities is very wonderful. And much, again, much appreciation. Thank you. Mm. Peace building. I like to connect with what you said, Rami. I can remember my own childhood very well growing up in the Swedish countryside. Very idyllic, very non-violent. We haven't had war in Sweden for 200 years, almost. And I had this feeling when I was young, which is exactly what you said. Why are they fighting? Something just, it was just so hard to see as a kid. Why would people shoot each other, make wars when we can talk, communicate, discuss? Yeah. For me, peace building is to do that, to take that choice, to compromise instead of being aggressive and to respect each other and to respect our differences and the, the mess that is like our history, geopolitics. Mm. Mm. And that there is a very important bridge between the peace inside ourselves and in our community, in our family, our school and the peace between countries and that this connection is essential. Mm. Yeah, thank you. So I, I, I don't know. Um, I think this is something that I struggle with in the sense that I can see how, you know, my, my connection to my local sanghas and connection to people um, who are really thinking about just being open and available and reaching out to others. I, I can see that playing out um, in my daily life, but when I think about peace building, I think about what happens on a more, you know, group level or a society level, um, and that's where I feel the ground fall out beneath me. So, um, when I think about the current state of politics in our country and um, and the, just the ripple effect that that has across the globe, um, I often feel powerless, and so I. I attempt to cope with that, I guess, by connecting with people and connecting with groups. And um, but yet, so much of my life is about you know day to day stuff, going to work, taking care of my daughter, um, you know, taking care of things around the house. And so, I feel a disconnect, and I'm aware that many of the people around me um, feel that disconnect as well. Right? We're not seeing necessarily what's going on in the lower income neighborhoods or what's going on uh, in our borders. Um, and uh, so I don't know, I, I guess I'm just trying to figure out a way to bridge that gap or that, that connection between the actions I'm taking locally and, and, and maybe seeing what type of ripple effect they have. Um, but uh, I don't know. It's just interesting because I don't really feel like I do much peace building, but yet, you know, I do reach out to um, some of the families in my daughter's school who are refugees, you know, and so I don't know, maybe it's just putting a label on it. I'm, I'm not sure, but um, 
and uh, it's inspiring to hear all the work that you you all are doing around the globe. So this is a very nice uh, conversation to have. So thank you. Um, yeah, Rami, you opened a nice door with the childhood memory because it really sparked something in me. Um, you know, so I, I'm from Michigan. I live in Michigan and um, we have really big lakes here for those of you who aren't near the Midwest, the largest freshwater lakes, some of the largest ones in the whole world. And so I grew up in this beautiful watery place with big lakes and big rivers. And uh, when I was a child, um, we would go uh, to Canada because Canada is right here. And we would go to the beach in Lake Erie. And when I was little, we would play on the beach. There we were, little kids playing on the beach. And often covering the beach, like as far as I can see, were dead fish, like dead charred fish. And I've since learned why that was. But of course, when we were kids, we were innocent. We didn't know. We just thought that was normal, you know, and we actually played with them. Yeah. <laughs> horrified at what toxic things I was playing with. But um, as I grew older, you know, I, it, how can I say this? It was, it was like reading the book, The Lorax, when I was little, you know, and this, this sort of morality tale of, you know, what happens when you just keep ruining things, you know? And I would think, well, yeah, well, of course, everybody would want the birds to be fine and nobody would want polluted water and nobody want to cut down all the trees like duh um and then growing up and really realizing um, oh <laughs> the world is not quite people don't see it the way i do and so you know i grew up and became a biologist because i would have to say that that my main uh, motivation has just been just uh not just my love of of nature because it isn't just the beautiful things it's also the kind of scary things that i love too um but this idea that really and truly um, these things aren't separate from me right they're part of my world and i'm part of their world and so this idea of interconnection you know i always say i i never converted to buddhism i just always was a buddhist i just didn't know it and um to share that with people because I, I feel like most people, almost everybody, or I do believe everybody has the capacity to really um, experience that love and connection with everything else. But sometimes you just need a little inspiration and, uh, or, or modeling, you know, somebody else to do it. Oh, well, it's okay. Um, if they're doing it, they love it. And so it's okay for me to love that forest too, or it's okay for me to, you know, be angry about that pipeline leak. And, um, and so I found that uh, in my, it's just my normal job as a biologist, I'm surrounded by other people, believe it or not, who really love um, the beauty of what they do. Uh, we're not actually a bunch of sort of cold zombies walking around as many people would think we are, um, at least not in microbiology departments. People really love uh, the complexity and the beauty and the connection to what they study. And I hope that I convey that to my students. Um, and I try to take that to, um, to our temple and our groups. Um, I think that that's one of the few, one of the things that maybe I do have to offer. I'm often overwhelmed, and, um, but really just that um, uh, kind of silly childish, but really innocent and naive just love of things, I have found people are longing to do that too. And then when you can do that, I think you're more apt to go out on a limb to protect them. So I don't know if that made any sense at all. I'm, I, I'm not going on very much sleep right now. So, <laughs> so anyway, thanks for, for that opportunity to kind of share, share that. Thank you. Yeah, I have to kind of 
bring yourself back up to the surface of, of your of your contemplations and sharing so really dived into it so peace building well the first thing actually uh, as i as i'm um sensitive to language and words is that the word um caught me or attracted me when we speak about attraction or how do we feel drawn to this issue or topic and i also found it suddenly found it much more alive or much more kind of juicy uh, compared to peacemakers making is also something active already so or active uh, yeah doing peace but peace building i really love about this term that it's um very create creating creative and it and it also points to a process so i felt drawn to these um so aspects of the of the term because um i also would wouldn't say i'm at peace i'm peaceful or i uh, am somebody who um, represents peace but i i feel very comfortable with the uh, with the with the notion of building putting together piece by piece piece so to to add pieces to to a piece idea or, or, or a big um, um, the longing that we might share for peace and so I don't have to think too much about what that actually is and how P, how I would define peace but I feel part of a creative field that is planting peace or building peace yeah. Yeah. And I don't know which kind of figure or building or um, sculpture comes out of that. Yeah. But it's very nourishing to be part of the building process. And also I know I, I have the immediate association that I can't, can't do that alone, that it's a joint um, thing to build peace to build that together being being connected in, in the longing and the longing is something that uh, connects me to others more than um, the outcome or the, the idea of the outcome so this is what peace must look like so this usually separates me from others if um, if, I, if my uh, if my if my picture of what should come out of this building process is too too narrow or too clear and that has to do with not knowing for me so I don't know what peace is in the end I might have the, I have the uh, for me, it's connected to wholeness. So since I read a quotation in, in one of the contributions to the um, Ash Pearls book, uh, which, which says, do I want to be good or do I want to be whole? Uh, I think a lot about this question also. So I, I agree, someone of you, I think, said that that Chico was, that was Chico. Um, that it's not about being good or being nice or having or the absence of tension but how can i um peacefully deal with tensions with difference with aggression also and with the natural kind of the natural um that it's natural that I'm, I'm, I will be guilty somehow. But as long as I live, I will kind of kill ants or um, as I live in Germany, in, in, in Europe, I, I, I am responsible for 
it was my lifestyle about how people live in other or die in other areas of the world. So I'm, I can't, ima I can't, um, it's an illusion to think that I'm a, uh, I'm peaceful if I'm interconnected. So, um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. It was um, just the question, um, the opening question to this was, um, I'm not even sure what the opening question was, but um, in listening, I know that um, it brought tears to me, you know, um, I started to cry as you as you were speaking, Rami, and um, the introduction to, to this piece and I, I keep coming. I keep coming back because I keep wanting to hear what I want. To, I keep. I keep wanting to hear what other people are doing, and um, and this seems to be the format that keeps present is presenting itself now for me. And 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 there's a way that I don't. I don't feel so isolated um, in my life hearing what hearing what you all are doing and what you all's thoughts are. Because sometimes it just feels overwhelming, you know, just trying to live your life just um, w within the confounds of, like, you know, peace. You know, it's like not many people think about um, whether they've killed an ant today or not. You know, like, <laughs> it's not like this big deal. And, um, and yet it is, you know, and yet it is. And because um, we are, it's, we are interconnected. And. So it's how not to feel silly about, you know, picking the ant up and taking it outside. And, and then there are the days that that doesn't happen. You know, there's the, there's the days that I spray it, you know. And, um, but that, that's a thought in my head is so different than how I was brought up. You know, it's like, so I keep having to come back to a different, a different family of origin you know, where I get validated for having those thoughts, you know, where I get validated for um, wanting to live my life differently than how I, than how it was presented and how it was presented and, and not feel isolated, you know, and um, I have my group of friends, um, which isn't as big as my group of friends were when I was younger because I have more require. I didn't. I mean, I'm just thinking about. I have more requirements today in my friendships, you know. And um, and I guess it's the spiritual buddies thing, you know. My friends need to um, be on a path that um, doesn't have to be on my path. They have to be on some sort of path that um, is helping to relieve suffering and bring peace and. And sometimes I don't even believe that these words are coming out of this mouth, you know, because that wasn't also all, it wasn't always my story or my history or my desires, you know, and um, so peace building for me is about um, building my own inner, in my inner peace so that I could be, um, yeah, so that I could be stronger you know, that, that I could be stronger. I'm not still sure stronger is the right word, but so that I could be stronger or healthier or, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know, whatever that is. So that's what this peace building and, and, and these groups mean to me. So yeah, thanks. Mm. <clears throat> Thank you, Dov. Thanks everyone. I'm just taking a moment um, to integrate all of this. Hmm. I 
I said there's different um, themes, but especially feelings come up as I hear him talk. Because we name so many really deep wishes. Um, I'm also aware of the time, and this is a, you know, as an experiment, this was the first meeting, so I see what an hour gives us. And um, if you feel, uh, if you need to leave exactly at, at the hour mark, um, please feel free to do so. Um, I'm happy to just go through the last round. And I will also say, if you're doing intent of leaving on time, um, before we close, um, please feel free to uh, join uh, the other cluster meetings. You know, the next ones coming up in October is uh, humanitarians. I have a feeling those clusters have a lot in common. <laughs> and these uh, threads um, relate to very common themes of, of universal wishes and universal values and needs. Um, so I would love just to do like a last round of um, check out. So it will be like our, our last sharing for today. But maybe just uh, the more, more importantly, the feeling or um, a feeling tone that has emerged this meeting. And maybe a few words about that. Um, I'll just say I really resonated with a sense of longing for communion. I've heard that in almost everybody. And it has that simplicity, childlike communion. And it, even just in hearing it and envisioning it, it makes me give rise to ground. And I'm feeling very grateful for everybody for joining. Thank you. Yeah. Jiko, go ahead. Yes, thank you. And the uh, support community is, um, and it's always there. It's. it's and I'm just. I, I'm delighted by Kathleen's. Um, saying peacemaking oh yes i hadn't seen that that view of making and thank you for opening that to me but peace building i mean it's almost like this peace discovering <laughs> it's always there and the support is always there and yet to have it uh, focused on and acknowledged and others coming to meet it is is very wonderful um I'm just thinking, feeling examples um, were missing. Uh, somehow, uh, we were talking um, theoretically, uh, or some, well, I certainly was talking theoretically about things. And can I give a short example? Um, I, I work uh, with uh, in gangland, um, impoverished area, going to a school and working with children. And for five years, um, I was rejected by the adults there that my very appearance is incredibly English, Pakeha, we call it here. And um, as I arrived, they would say, oh, what did you come here for? You're a nuisance. Um, and they wouldn't help me if I needed anything and so on. Why did I keep going back for five years? And the answer was because the children loved it and clearly needed it. And we had such a great time together. Um, but after five years, I was allowed to actually give a talk to the teachers and parents about what I was doing. And the next time I went, two enormous Pacific Island women came towards me and said, Kia ora kuia, which means welcome, um, woman elder of the tribe that takes, nurtures the future. And I thought, wow, um, all those years of being rejected and um, creating irritation and suddenly the peace is available between us mm -hmm. and that to me is peace building peace making um, and doing it a way where I'm not reacting to it I'm fitting in as best I can knowing 
that there is some value in getting the feedback from the children, but just keeping going until the acceptance um, appears. And of course, that's not the end of the story. I still irritate and annoy people and so on. But it, to, that to me um, was what, what, what it's about. And it's a similar thing with um, going into the old people's home to talk to isolated um, old people in their room that were near death and being overcome for the first few weeks by the smell going in and having to overcome my repulsion of the smell of these places and then noticing that I'm just not noticing the smell. I'm going in because it's somebody I want to see and I'm excited to talk to and I want to know how they're, they're getting on and that smell just doesn't mean anything at all. So that's me going to the edges of my capabilities and staying there and opening to it and still trying to uh, receive and find that connection and, fi and finding the connection, at least temporarily, um, so that it's a discovery of peace. Not a, I'm not making anything, I'm not building anything, I'm not, I'm just showing up. <laughs> yeah, showing up and uh, not knowing and uh, trying to make connection in myself of my, uh, within myself and find the peace within myself and I hope it will be helpful for others as well. Ah, too many weeks, sorry. Thank you very much. Oops, I was muted. Great. I am at both times, uh, at the same time, delighted to hear so many expressions of peace building. We've covered like environmental aspects, humanitarian aspects, community, grassroots, everyday life, saving ants. I love it. Uh, and at the same time, I'm also very sleepy from a very intensive day and week. Yeah. I moved recently. Yeah. So um, I feel content and grateful. Thank you. Thank you, Carla, for, for joining. Mm. Who we have left, Kathleen and Dove, yeah. Okay, <laughs> that really has to run. Okay, I'll be short, of course, last uh, last round. So I, I, I mostly feel joy and, and also love. I, when, when, I, when I listen to you and, and, and when I also listen to myself, I think this is just, yeah, it supports love. I feel that, and uh, and and also surprise was something some last thing that came up now uh, when I listened to Chico that um, that when I feel that I'm building peace at one place very consciously also kind of doing my work with people or with uh, some environmental issue or so I'm doing that and what surprises then is something different that happens and, and that was also an example that came mm. to my mind a, a younger woman here from our co-housing community just recently um passed by and, and then stopped and, and said you know something kathleen um i don't even have to talk to you just when i pass by or when i sit next to you your equanimity and groundedness make me so peaceful and so these are small kind of surprises in peace building which I wouldn't I, there was no intention in it and no um, no wanting or need or something it was it just happens and that's that's very yeah that feeds my joy again so there the circle closes I thank you so much I'm grateful for being here and looking forward to next time mm. thanks and I pass on the word to Dove
Yeah, thank you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it really simple. Um, my, my feeling tone is um, just blissfully sad. You know, it's like blissfully sad. It's, it's not a bad thing. So thank you so much for allowing that to emerge. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Thank you, everyone. Um, obviously, to be continued. Uh, I find it really rich and um, and again I invite everybody to the rest of the cluster meetings it will be interesting to find um, the common threads and also um, feel free to take on any of these connections that um, people we met here um, everybody is available on the membership platform you can find them connect with them um, and I, again, I want to really value all of you who came from all these parts of the world, from New Zealand. Oh my God, Jiko, thank you for waking up at 12 o'clock in the morning to join us. Um, I personally would um, um, would like to schedule the next few ones in other time zones, so it will be also easier for you um, and not people in, in, in your closer time zones. Um, So maybe I'll just close and dedicate the, our time here to peace and building it and all the components that build it, known and not known. Mm. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, take care, and I uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thank you very much and everybody. Take care. Be well, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>